take a look at the agenda while I'm going over this. If you have questions, please do um, pose them throughout the, uh, the session. I'll ask that you add them into the um, chat window and uh, we'll make sure we get to all of your questions over the course of this session. Uh, we're going to start off now with your mediums and uh, the message uh, and uh, day I'm going to pass it over to you. Great. Okay. So before we get into some practical tools and tips that Chris is going to talk about later, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the message before we get into those mediums. So by now, I'm sure you've talked about the reasons why you're running or participating. And I wanted to talk really quickly about what I think is an effective tool um, or a foundation that we used in one of our sessions at Women Win Toronto is we had participants take a cue card and write down the reasons why uh, they're running. And I think that works as an effective tool because it's a good anchor to reference throughout of it what can be a really busy campaign period. And it's kind of like a lighthouse or a true north to keep you, to, to keep you grounded. And again, it's a good tool because elections by nature are really emotional. Um, as we can see, um, for good or bad, it's driven by passion. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the point of this is that voters are responding to something. And I think you're going to see throughout this thread um, throughout the webinar, excuse me, there's a thread that we want some humanity in, in, in campaigns because that's what people respond to. So today is really about translating um, that into the social media space so you can build your, your community. Um, so we're already on the slide, so I'll just get right into it. Um, it starts with your story. You uh, don't build a community, other people do. So you have to make it meaningful. Uh, be relatable, that way people can connect. There has to be, I guess, a hook. Um, so think about being your authentic self and that's the honey that's going to start attracting bees. Um, and again, that's where that cue card comes in because it'll constantly remind you of, of the reasons why, why you're running. And the other thing is you really need to stay, on, stay engaged. Uh, being in the social space means you're providing constant content and how constant really is up to your team, uh, you and your team, but it really should always be valuable. And unless it's, unless it's a troll, um, you should always um, do your best to be responding. Um, think about social media being like a water cooler talk for the digital age, so you don't wanna leave people hanging. Um, like if you were talking to a colleague around the water cooler, you just suddenly wouldn't walk away if they were asking you a question. So, um, Think about how social media has become a crucial component of campaigns now, and really they're, they're crucial no matter how large your campaign is. So let's talk about why. Chris, do you mind going to the next slide? Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Okay, so let's talk about these, what kinds of opportunities social media can, can present. So education, conversation, and it's cost effective. Um, Using social media really is a great way to educate because whether you're a first time candidate and no one outside of your mama knows who you are or you're up for re-election and you have to defend some decisions, you can speak to your voters and let them know where you stand about um, whether it's again, introducing yourself or about a specific issue or your goals, um, values and platform. Social media is a really great way um, to, to educate uh, people in the social media space. Um, the other opportunity, of course, um, is conversation. You can listen to voters and participate in Twitter chats or ask me anything. It's two good examples is here in Toronto, you have a CP24 does hashtag ask the mayor, or yesterday, Andrew Horath, I think, had um, ask Andrew anything on Twitter, which were uh, people could rally around a hashtag, ask questions, and people organizing can follow along because there's one a grounding point, that hashtag, to be able to follow and use. You can also do rapid response, like responding to opponents. Um, if they're saying something that's offside or inaccurate, you can use that to be able to, to respond and have your point of view be heard. And the most magical words for any municipal campaign, especially if it's your first go, is that it's cost effective. Um, we've all done this with our, our accounts, though each pages are kind of different, but they're free. So Twitter, Facebook, you basically set up an account and you're live. So Ideally, um, the other thing about it being cost effective is the data that it can provide. Hopefully there's someone on your team um, that can look at Facebook analytics or Twitter and that'll tell you a couple of different things. Who is responding, when they're responding, and um, if you dig a little deeper, you can figure out who from a demographics 
demographics perspective um, is actually engaged with what it is that you're saying. Uh, next slide. And so some things I would encourage you to think about when you're developing your social media presence and attracting followers are these questions. Um, you wanna figure out what works. So for example, who? Um, do a little bit of research and see who is talking about the things you want to talk about. What hashtags are they using? Um, what kind of keywords? Adopting hashtags is a great way to building your brand and making sure that you're seen. You also want to think about the how. So other than sounding like a human being, what kind of human being are you? Um, you don't want to stray away from who you really are um, or content isn't going to come naturally or sound authentic. So figure out your tone. And what are you saying? So you're running for office, and, but you're not a nuclear physicist. Um, so in a brainstorm session, you might want to think about um, a handful of issues that you care about and know a lot about. And I say that because you don't want to be caught in a position where you've said something inaccurate or, or worse, offside and inappropriate, because then that becomes the story for all the wrong reasons. And the last thing you want to consider is when you're saying it. Again, it's those use those analytics and figure out how to use them. So again, what hashtags are being used, when people are using them, um, where is all this stuff going to live? So let me, to that point, let me just give you a quick overview of some of the platforms and what they can offer. Uh, these are the three big ones, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And here are a couple of ways that you can use them. They are more there are other, um, other platforms like LinkedIn, Snapchat that you can think about, but um, these are the three that maybe you should, you should consider. Um, if you do win, and hopefully you do, uh, I'm sure there's gonna be an appetite for a more sustained presence, so you, might, you could think about other platforms, but since we're gonna be thinking about, um, or excuse me, I'm going to be talking about a few weeks or months, I think juggling two or three is, is plenty. So, Facebook, there are, there are groups that you can make public or private, so that way you can use them to either uh, spread the word about a conversation of the day or how you're going to respond or, so, or anything that you're gonna be talking about and let your team in a private group or public um, know. It's an, Facebook is really great to be able to reply and respond to questions. Um, it's also a great way to drive traffic to your website or maybe a Medium blog. Um, and it also, um, it's your own network. You can go on Facebook Live and you can broadcast town halls, events, debates, or maybe just go behind the scenes with something. Um, so those are a few options Facebook has for you. Twitter is really great for rapid response. You can respond to an opponent. You can respond to a relevant breaking news story. Um, microblogging um, is when you have like a Twitter thread that maybe you want to dig a little bit deeper on a specific topic. Again, Twitter chats and hashtags, there are plenty of organizations uh, developing uh, what they call Twitter parties or ch chats. You can hop on and be able to participate. And of course, you can always reply and respond to your audience unless it's a troll. Instagram, I think, could be really interesting and is underused. I think um, people like to know kind of behind the scenes and how the sausage is made. So you might want to think about um, using that as a way to showcase volunteers, enthusiasm. And of course, as we all know, Facebook uh, owns Instagram. So it's a really good way to integrate um, those two platforms. It also um, reaches the most youngest and diverse audience, Facebook an older audience. So it really is a good way to be able to make sure that you're reaching two different sets of uh, demographics. And you can also, because it's a visual medium, you can show a little bit more personality um, with your team, again, volunteers when you're out on events. Um, and again, you just want to be mindful of those hashtags and make, to make sure that your content is a little bit more, more searchable. So those are just sort of some grounding things to think about um, as we move into tactics, which uh, Chris is going to do right now. Thanks so much, Jay. Um, and so I, this is a natural place to have some questions asked. Uh, I, I have just posted to the chat window um, uh, that on this slide we're looking at, there's, there's a, a ton of uh, really neat tactics here listed. And I, I would love if, uh, if anybody on the call is thinking of doing some of these or um, you know, doesn't know what, it, what some of these things mean, um, uh, you know, and we, or would like more about uh, than they just went through. Um, if you could just post your questions to the chat window. In the meantime, Day, I think I will uh, I'll ask a couple questions just to to get things started. 
Um, one is, uh, you know, from your experience uh, or from your observation in this cycle, because I find, you know, from one cycle, say, uh, to the next uh, in the election, in election campaigns, especially with how things are evolving, the people are, are developing new tactics or, um, uh, or approaches to these. Is there anything that stood out um, recently that you're seeing that, uh, you know, in the past 12 months or so that is new or that you've been really impressed by any local initiatives that are um, that are doing a really good job um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, using these mediums um, and uh, 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 getting their messages? Um, aside from my own, um, aside from when I'm in Toronto, there is, of course, Progress Toronto. Um, in terms of things that are different, and, I don't... Actually, sorry, on that, I'd love, I'd love you to talk about Win Win Toronto, because I personally think that uh, that uh, it's one of the uh, standouts in terms of uh, new players on the, sp on the scene, oh, and certainly you. you're in no small part because of the work you're doing. Um, so... There's a couple of different things that, that I wouldn't mind mentioning. So first, I will start off with Women in Toronto, my work with Ontario Thrive. I think what we've done, um, especially more so with Ontario Thrive, I would say, is really taking advantage of um, just the concept of, of threads. It's not a new concept by any imagination um, to you to develop a Twitter thread, um, but I think it's a really good way to be able to, what we've been able to do is provide a little bit more context, to why the issues that we're talking about really matter. And it's also, um, I think, with the language and the tone that I've adopted with both Women Win Toronto and Ontario Thrive, I like to think um, that it's very friendly and approachable um, and relatable because I think um, there's just a lot of buzzwords and concepts, data that gets floated around. And we really just wanna break it down for people and, and hopefully have them understand um, how issues um, that are prominent in the campaign relate to them on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing that I wanted to mention that in terms of like the way the platforms are being used effectively is, um, and uh, this MP immediately came to mind, um, was as Selena Chavez, Cesar Chavez, Chavanez, um, pardon me if I'm getting her name wrong, but she has really um, used uh, Twitter, I would say, especially used the Periscope and stuff to really uh, connect with people. It, she's really turned it into her own little channel or network uh, so people can really see, you know, behind the scenes, her life. Um, I know she's a big advocate for mental health um, issues uh, to really show people that, that you know, uh, that she cares and that she struggles as well. So I think it's not, they're not innovative. I think people, I think politicians and organizations are just being more real. And there's a lot of negative that comes to that, of course. Um, but I think used well and in the spirit of being able to connect with your audience, I think it's, that's a positive thing. Yeah, that's excellent. I love that, that idea of, of uh, uh, the voice coming through. And I mean, in particular, I almost feel like the way you um, have structured your channels that there's a personality that comes through and maybe your use of um, you know whether it's uh, uh, gifs or um, emojis or whatnot like if you could talk about like some of the um, uh, how you how you create not just you know the, the communicate a message but mm -hmm. also you give a channel that personality um, yeah I mean I'll leverage a little bit of my work in because I do work in advertising but um, when you want to develop a brand you want to have maybe three different, I'll call them pillars, one of which is maybe a little bit in conflict with one another because what you're doing is because people are complex. So you want to be able to describe your brand in like two or three different adjectives and then use that as your base. So for example, in the case of, let's say, I'll use one in Toronto, is you wanna be helpful, informative, and cheeky because what we're doing is fun. Um, in the case of, um, say I did some work for, for Bailey's some time back and they were also, they were approachable luxury. So I think if you're able to describe um, your quote unquote brand using like a two or three different adjectives from there um, and using that story or those reasons why you want to run from there, um, I think you, you'll soon be able to craft uh, your tone of voice and emojis and gifts are just uh, a way to say, while this is serious, we're, we're not always going to take ourselves too seriously because if you're a human being, you don't. Often you don't. So that's why I think the use of like emojis and gifts can sort of sometimes take something that's really heated and bring it down a little bit um, and have like a, a little breath of fresh air. 
uh, conventions, right? Okay, so that's, uh, we'll move along here. Great. Uh, tips and tools. Uh, so we've got, first of all, a content calendar, um, and we talked about the value of, um, uh, of planning out your messaging, making sure that you're in regular touch with your champions, that you've got a sense of um, what your key messages are uh, week to week. So, Day, over to you to talk about uh, the use of this, uh, this content calendar. Oh, thanks. So um, what we're looking at here is uh, what I call the snapshot. So this is a really good tool um, that will be provided to you guys um, to kind of look at the month or the number of weeks to say, okay, what kinds of things could we talk about? That's where I always start. Are there special holidays? Are there like Father's Day that we could create a message for? Um, different events, maybe something about the World Cup or whatever it is. But this is also, you also want to include a legend, um, which I provided there to represent each of the different platforms um, that you're going to be on. So that way you know where things are going to be housed, um, where things are going to be posted, excuse me, um, and what it is. Just a one line to say, Father's Day message here, visit at the um, a town hall over here, debate over here, and how you're gonna do it, whether it's gonna be on Facebook, Twitter, what have you. So that's kind of like a, the snapshot of the month. Um, I don't know if we have the more detailed page um, on this. Um, Chris, do we have that or no? Yeah, I, um, I've got it open in another tab, so just, okay. uh, just give me one moment. So there is a second component to that, and that's where you get really into the detail. Uh, and you can share this with, with your core team or whoever's volunteering for social media. And in that, that's where you're going to put in uh, your copy, whether or not it's been approved, um, kind of like, and you also want to add a little bit of detail as to um, the purpose of the message, just to make sure that it makes sense. It's a sort of a, a pause to make sure that what it is that you want to include on social makes sense for you and your campaign. Um, emojis and where it's going to be housed and by date. So this is where you get into, you can add in some metrics. You can adjust this, of course, to how it would work for you. Um, but there's also um, spaces for feedback and, um, and a column for whether or not it's approved and whether or not it's been posted. Again, so everyone can keep track of what the messages, what the messages are and when they're going up and when they have been up. And when they have, you want to take a look at metrics. So uh, depending, you can get really far you know, deep into metrics, but you want to, for the first couple of weeks, maybe pay attention so you can see what, how people are responding to your messages. Um, so that's the purpose of the content calendar, and this is one way to set it up. Um, again, uh, you can adjust how it works for you, uh, but it covers the major platforms and even a website if you have one. 